Good day, everyone. I hope you are blessed. You are going to be blessed by this message today. And I want to believe that you are going to receive this message gladly and be changed and to see a greater glory of God coming your way. Let us pray. Father God, we want to thank you. We worship you this day. We want to worship you and surrender to you, you to you, wherever we are before you. We come boldly to the throne of grace. We come before you and we want to receive your word this day. And we want to receive all that you want to speak to us this day. And we shall be blessed. And we shall be filled with your anointing, your glory, even when the world is getting darker. But the glory of the Lord is seen upon us. Is seen upon you, brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever you are, sitting or standing, wherever you are. Receive this by faith in Jesus' name. Let us go to the first slide here. The Lord says this day, in this time and season, in times of trouble and trials, do not allow your heart to be hardened. For I am still your God. And I am still the same yesterday, today, and forever. I will know how to work all things together for your good, even in ways you cannot understand yet. Hang on to me, look to me, for I will know how to deliver you from even the deepest of troubles. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are living in a very dangerous world. We are living in the time of chaos, economic recessions, diseases, viruses, factories being shut down, people getting jobless, and so forth. But the Lord wants to encourage you that in times like this, as the world is getting darker and darker, and it will be because the Bible says so, but the glory of the Lord shall be seen in you in greater ways. Therefore, Receive His light, arise and shine for the Lord. This is your time. This is the time of your life, the time and season for you, for you to arise before the Lord, to receive a fresh anointing, to experience the greater glory of the Lord. His grace is more than enough for you, wherever you may be and no matter what you have been going through. But there's one area that the Lord wants to speak to us to this day. Is this. Do not allow your heart to be hardened, even in this time of trials. No matter what you have been going through, brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter what uh, uh, question you may be asking that goes unanswered, why does this happen to me? Why does that happen to me? But the Lord is saying this to you. Look not to your left. Look not to your right. But look to me. Hang on to me. Hang on to the word. When many are shaking. But I will be firm. Because you are my firm foundation. You are the anchor to my soul. I will come before you. I will hang on to your word. I will stand in your word. Let's go to the second slide here. Here we look at. Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 3, New King James Version, the Lord says, And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Now, the Lord continued to multiply his signs and wonders to show himself strong. But the more he did that, the more Pharaoh's heart was hardened. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 14, So the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hard. See the word hard again? He refuses to let the people go. Exodus chapter 9, verse 35 says, So the heart of Pharaoh was hard. Neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord had spoken by Moses. Now the word hardened here in Exodus chapter 7, verse 3 is kasha in Hebrew. Kasha in Hebrew means to be tough, to be sore, to be stiff, to be fierce, 
to react negatively or to be defensive. Now, when the Lord showed himself strong, Pharaoh became very defensive. The Lord wanted to confront Pharaoh. The Lord was using Moses and Aaron to let the people go, the people of God, the people of Israel go from the stranglehold of Pharaoh. But Pharaoh wouldn't want to let go. Pharaoh wanted to hang on to them. Pharaoh wanted to continue to stifle them. The Pharaoh wanted to keep them in bondage. But the Lord wanted to set them free. So therefore, the Lord confronted Pharaoh. Not just through words, but also through his signs and his wonders. The first plague, water, turned into blood. The second plague, frogs, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. And the more the Lord shown himself strong in signs and wonders, the more Pharaoh hardened his heart. Not until the tenth plague, when his firstborn died, that he gave in. People of God, the Lord is calling us, his people, do not be like a Pharaoh. Yes, maybe you have been uh, uh, in a sin. Maybe you, uh, certain things that you hold on to, the old things that you have been holding on to, the old ways, the old patterns in your life that you wouldn't want to let go. But the Lord is speaking to you and say, let it go. Let go of that sin. Let go of something that you hold on to because I want to do a new thing for you. Be like David. David's heart was softened. When Prophet Nathan confronted him, yes, David made a big mistake. He slept with Bathsheba, somebody's wife. He killed the husband of Bathsheba, Uriah, cunningly. It was a sin. It was wrong. But when Prophet Nathan, the voice of the Lord, spoke through Prophet Nathan, confronted him, dealing with him, David did not harden his heart. You see the contrast between Pharaoh and David. Pharaoh was the total opposite. Pharaoh didn't want to let go. Pharaoh didn't want to let go. Pharaoh was hardened in his heart. Now let's look at this, the other slide here right now. Why would the Lord harden Pharaoh's heart? Someone actually asked me this question. Why would the Lord harden Pharaoh's heart when his purpose was to tell the Pharaoh to let the Israelites go? It sounds rather schizophrenic. The Lord, why would the Lord harden Pharaoh's heart when his purpose was actually wanting to touch Pharaoh's heart to let the people go. Now, here's the answer. Yes, the Lord wanted to set his people free from Pharaoh. That was his intention because the Lord heard the cry of the people of Israel. But how come Pharaoh's heart was hardened even more? Now, here's the answer. It was because when God showed himself so strong in signs and wonders, when God showed himself mighty, albeit through the plague, against Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh refused to acknowledge that God is more powerful than himself. Pharaoh refused to acknowledge that God is greater than him. He thought he is God. But he refused to acknowledge that God is greater. God is sovereign. God is supreme. The Lord God Almighty. So instead of softening his heart, his heart was hardened even more until the template, the death of his firstborn, that he finally gave in. Now you see, Pharaoh stood to lose even more because he hardened his heart. He didn't want to open up. He couldn't see what God wanted to do. People of God, sometimes in our lives, we cannot see what God wants to do in our life. We question Him. We say, why? Why do you do that to me? But you know that God sees further and God sees farther than us. God knows what He is doing because He is sovereign. He is supreme. He is greater. 
He knows what he's doing. Maybe you have been going through a situation whereby you have been asking God, why? Maybe you have been doubting, why must that happen to me? But take heart, the Lord loves you. The Lord will never leave you nor forsake you as long as you worship Him, you believe in Him. For those who call on the name of Jesus shall be saved. The word saved here doesn't just mean saved, it means delivered, restored, healed. It's a big word. But the Lord wants you to know, like my son, my daughter, you may not understand why you are going through certain so and so. But in the end, the jigsaw puzzle is going to be solved. I know the end from the beginning. I know you're sitting down and you're rising up. I love you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Some of you over here, you need to hear this. You need to, re you need to receive this by faith. Don't blame yourself. Don't condemn yourself. Don't regret. Yes, everyone make mistakes. No one is perfect. But old things have passed away. All things have become new in your life. Today, let us not be like Pharaoh. Let us not be hardened. The more God wants to deal with us, the more we allow Him. Not like Pharaoh, the more God confronted and deal with Him in that certain area of His life, the more He hardened Himself. Let's go to the next slide here. Do not be like Pharaoh, but be like David. Now, David was different. David was a man after God's heart. David's heart was soft, in contrary to Pharaoh's heart that was hard. Do not be like Pharaoh, whose heart was hardened, but all the more. This is the time to let your heart be soft, like David. When Prophet Nathan confronted him with God's words, he didn't harden his heart. He didn't become defensive. Instead, he received the correction from the Lord with an open heart and yielded heart. Therefore, he was blessed. Yes, he suffered the consequence. His firstborn with Bathsheba died. But you know what? The second one with Bathsheba was someone called Solomon. That very Solomon that we know. Solomon means peace. And another name for Solomon is Jedidiah. It means the beloved of God or the friend of God. What a beautiful name. You see, people of God, God is a God of second chance. Yes, we may have made mistakes in our past, but if you allow the Lord to just deal in that area of your life, that very part of your life that you cover, that you wouldn't want anyone to know, not even your family member, but today the Lord wants to just come right into that place. He wants to set you free. He wants to set you free from every form, every area of your life that holds you back because a time of greater glory is coming. Maybe you think that God is, mm, God is already done with me. I'm over the hill. No, I want to just declare to you, it doesn't matter what age. Moses was 80 years old when God began to use him greatly. The Lord is saying that you are going to have many more mountaintop experiences. Rest assured, as long as you look to Him, not look left, not look right, not look to man's ways, but look to God, look to the Word of God, set your mind on Him, on His Spirit, you are going to see that the Lord is going to continue, continue to work in you. He is going to work all things together for good for you. Let's go to the next slide here. Now, when David received that rebuke, the word of the Lord from Nathan, the prophet, David did not react defensively. David did not harden his heart. David did not kasha. David did not become fierce and stiff and sore against Nathan. I mean, he could have because he was the king. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13, he says, So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. See, he admitted his sins. And that's what touches God's heart. In Psalm 51, verse 10 to 12, he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, 
and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me by your generous spirit. The word steadfast spirit, I like the word in King James Version. It says, renew a right spirit within me. The word steadfast here, or right here, is kun in Hebrew. It means renew a loyal spirit, a faithful spirit. God is always a faithful God, people of God. But for, as far as David is concerned, he was saying, renew a loyal spirit in me. Renew a yielded spirit in me. Renew a faithful spirit in me, like I used to. He acknowledged his fault. He allowed the Lord to deal with his faults. He allowed the Lord to deal with that area that God wants to set him free. You see, God has greater plans for David. God has a greater plan for you, people of God. You too are the beloved of God. You too are loved of the Lord. Loved by the Lord. And no matter what's past, the past is past. Everyone makes mistakes. It's gone. Today, the Lord is like giving you a new book. A new book with the first page. Blank page. If you allow Him to draw right on that page, a fresh and a new is a brand new start for you. There's every hope. There's every reason for you to rejoice, people of God. This is your time. Yes, the world may be getting darker and darker. More and more dangerous, perilous. God knows what else, what other kinds of virus may come. God knows what other forms of terrorism may come. But fear not. Fear not. Be not afraid. Because the glory of the Lord will be seen in you. In fact, the glory of the Lord will be your rag up. He will go before you. And he will go. Uh, he will be, be. He will be backing you up. People of God, fear not. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be afraid. Receive the peace of the Lord in your life right now. Let's go to the next slide here. The Lord says further to me when I was seeking the Lord for the message today. He says this: Do not be afraid, my people. Do not be afraid to let me change you. Do not be afraid to let go of the old ways and embrace the new ways that I have spoken to you. For I am causing you to see not how man sees, but I am causing you to see how I see. And as you allow me to change you, you shall begin to see my greater glory. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Now that's what happened to David. David did not look back since then. He went on to become the greatest king ever in Israel. Now, how about Pharaoh in contrast? When he hardened his heart, he just uh, couldn't uh, uh, accept the fact, the truth, that he had, there's a God who is sovereign, who is supreme, who is higher than him. You know what? He stood to lose many things. Not only did he lose his firstborn, do you know what? He lost his entire mighty army, the chariots. They all got drowned under the Red Sea. He stood to lose so much more just because he hardened his heart. The Lord wants you to know this. If you allow yourself to be changed, if you soften your heart before the Lord, if your heart is yielded before the Lord this day, I tell you what, I declare upon you, there's a bright future for you. Allow the Lord to change you. Do not be afraid when the Lord deals with you because for whom He deals with, He loves. These are whom He loves as well. So people of God, let go. I pray that you will let go of whatever that helps you back. Maybe you have been bitter with somebody. Maybe you have been very unforgiving. Maybe there are certain things in your life that you hold on to, that you know that you know you've got to let go. Maybe it's a certain way of doing things. Maybe it's old way. It doesn't work anymore. If you allow Him, 
if you allow him to just set you free. God used prophet Nathan. Eventually, David was set free. Eventually, David went on to become greater. I believe that the Lord will make you the same, will cause you to be likewise. Let's go to the final slide now. It takes a soft heart to embrace the new. Yes, that is the key. If you allow, if you want the new wine to come into your life, if you want the new things in your life to happen in your life, it takes a soft heart. Psalm 51, verse 4 to 7 says, Against you and you alone, I'm reading from New Living Translation, Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say. For I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me, but you desire honesty from the womb. Or rather, you desire truth in the inward parts, in another version. Teaching me wisdom, even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Though David's first child with Bathsheba died, but their second was none other than the very Solomon. Solomon speaks of peace. Jedidiah, the, the other name for Solomon, speaks of the beloved, the friend. You see, God sees that in your future, that he will go hand in hand with you. He will know how to prosper you. He will know how to give you the wisdom. He will know how to enable you to make the right moves in your life. To make the right moves into the right decisions and into the right directions. Many people in this world are blur. They have fall into pitfalls again and again. But the Lord is going to enable you if you are hearing this. Receive it by faith. Receive it. You see, the Holy Spirit doesn't just empower. The Holy Spirit enables you. The Lord is enabling you to make the right moves moving forward. Into the right decision and the right directions. You will know what to do. You will know what to avoid. You will see ahead where many others couldn't see. In times when there's economic recession, in times of troubles and trials, the Lord will know how to prosper you. The Lord will know how to give you new ideas if you allow Him. Be like a David, not a Pharaoh. Receive this by faith. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, wherever you may be right now, that the Lord will just Invade right into the deepest most of you. Set you free. Let go, people. Let go of that unforgiveness. Let go of those things that you have been holding on to that you know that you should be letting go. Let go of that bitterness. Open up that prison in your life. Let go all these prisoners. Let them go. Your life will be even lighter. Your life will be easier. Yes, He's taking away the burdens away from you and He's releasing upon you a fresh start, a brand new start. God is going to revolutionize the way you see things. God is going to grant you great ideas, new ideas in times like this. And the world will see that you are God's beloved. The world will see that the glory of the Lord has come upon you. This decade is a decade of God's glory, a greater glory of the Lord. Yes, many of us, many in the world, they began this decade trouble, trouble. But the Lord has in store for us. Now you see, enemy likes to strike first, but the Lord will have the final say in your life. I want to declare upon you that this is a decade of greater glory, of the law. This is a decade of greater signs and wonders that is going to work through you, that God is going to work through you. This is a decade of transfer of wealth in ways that you cannot imagine because God is giving you blueprints and ideas that textbooks will never teach you. This is the divine wisdom of the law. Yes, the Lord is re releasing upon you that restoration, 
the joy in spite of the darkness in the world. Receive this by faith in the name of Jesus. Amen.